Hey guys, I'm back and I have a wonderful, wonderful dinner plan for you tonight. It is going to be great. Another oldie, but a goodie nonetheless. Okay, before we get started guys, just want to kind of tell you a bit. Love your comments. I certainly appreciate you watching the video, but I need more comments. I love the ones that I have, but I need more. Tell me what you think about these things, guys. I'm trying my best to give you what I think you want, but I don't know because you don't give me a bunch of comments. I know you're looking, but I need the comments, okay? Hit that notification button to so you can get notified every time we upload a video or I upload a video. I always say we. I'm always referring to Wesley and I. But every time I upload a video, if you hit the notification button, you'll be notified every time I do that, okay? Give me a thumbs up if you like the content of this video and if you like what I made, thumbs up. Yes, thumbs up. Let me know if you like it. You can give me a thumbs down. If you don't like it, don't give me a thumbs down. Thumbs up, okay? All right, and most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you guys so much. I love you and I certainly, I'm not complaining. I certainly appreciate all the support that you've given me thus far. I want more comments though. I want you to tell me what you like and don't like about these videos. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, and share your recipes too. If they're, if I'm doing something different, tell me about that. If it's the same, yay. And if it's a little different, I want to know about that. If you've never done it this way, I want to know about all of that. Okay, guys, let's get started with this wonderful dinner that I'm making for you today. Welcome to Brandon's Kitchen. Okay, guys, today we are going to make meatloaf and potatoes. Yes. Okay. Great dinner, always wonderful, kind of easy, you know, a bunch of little ingredients, but still easy. You just mix it all together, pop it in the oven. That's it. So I am going to start by showing you what we have here. Okay. Like I said, pretty big list, you guys, but it's okay. Okay, in my pot here, guys, or in my little platter here, and guys, I chose to use this because I'm going to show you how I mix this all together, but I wanted you to get a good view of it, so I chose to use this because it's short and it's long or wide so I can mix it up but it's short enough so you can actually look in and see what I'm doing. These are just some potatoes guys and I did not cube them or anything. I cut them in these little strips, little fat strips here. I just thought that would be cuter when you put it on the plate. I don't know. Okay, here we have a little bit of celery salt guys and this is a teaspoon and this is a tablespoon of paprika. Over here, we have our beautiful celery, celery that we're going to saute along with our minced garlic and chopped onions. And guys, in this, I forgot to say, this celery, this is three-fourths of a cup of chopped celery. This is a cup and a half of chopped onions and two large tablespoons of minced garlic. And this is a cup and a half of assorted peppers. And guys, all of those little last three things we just named or four things, we are going to saute in just a few seconds. Okay, guys, over here, I have my garlic and onion powder. In the bottom of this, I don't know if you can see it or not, there's salt and pepper. There is a tablespoon and a half of each one. This, guys, is uh, a fourth of a cup of Worcestershire sauce. This is, guys, this is about four tablespoons of mustard. I'm not sure I'm going to use all this yet, but here it is, mustard. And guys, mustard gives anything, any meat that you put it into or anything else for that matter, a wonderful little tang. You don't even know where it's coming from, but you know there's something in there. It's mustard. Okay, this is our one large egg, guys. And guys, this here, this is saltine crackers that I soaked in whipping cream. And guys, be careful because this thing solidifies. Look, it doesn't even move. <laughs> but that's what it is. It's saltine crackers. And guys, it's probably two-thirds of a pack of, of, of that sleeve of saltine crackers. And all I did is I just poured the whipping cream over it until it just kind of covered it. And this is what happens when you just let it sit for about two minutes. Okay. And that is going to work as our binder, guys. You know the egg and the crumbs. If you use breadcrumbs in yours or just dried crackers or bread, whatever you're using, it works as a binder in our meatloaf. And last but not least, guys, I told you a long time ago I love these, our beautiful Rotel tomatoes. Okay. All right, guys. I am going to move over to our pan, and we're going to get to sautéing those beautiful veggies. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, let's get started with these wonderful veggies. We're going to saute these veggies up first, get them a bit soft before we mix them into our uh, ground beef. And I forgot to tell you, I gave you all our little fixings that we're putting in our meatloaf. 
forgot to tell you about the meat. I'll do that in a minute. Let's saute these veggies. All right, guys, we just have our pan, guys. And this is just a fourth to a half a cup of olive oil. And we're just gonna put these guys in. There are our wonderful little chopped celery. And guys, most of the time, I don't put a bunch of celery in my meatloaf. Sometimes I don't put it in there at all. I just had a bunch of celery in there, so I decided to use it. It's just a wonderful bit. It's just going to lend another little wonderful layer of flavors in there. Can't hurt anything. Let's move this guy over, and we're going to put in our chopped assorted peppers. And guys, like I tell you, with everything, I always just have a bunch of assorted peppers on hand, and I just like to use them up evenly. So it does not matter if you just have one color or, you know, if you want to put more in there like I do with all the colors, feel free. But if you only have one color, that is more than enough. Okay. And guys, over here, we are going to throw in those wonderful chopped onions and that minced garlic. And we're just going to dump it on the other side. Wonderful. Okay, guys. And all we're going to do, guys, is just, let, just mix this guy up and just let it saute down a little bit. We're going to put all of this into that wonderful meatloaf to give it some wonderful, wonderful flavor. Ah, ah. I'm not going to say it, but you, you already know. You already know what I feel about onions and peppers and celery and all of that. You already know. So I won't even bother with saying it. Let's turn that up a little bit, guys. Get it sauteing down a bit get our vegetables and guys i'm not really trying to brown these i just want to wilt them a little bit once they're wilted you know they're kind of cooked so that's all we want to do with this just get it down wilt it down pretty good so we can put this into our beautiful meatloaf okay guys i'm just gonna let this sit and just cook a bit and let it cook down wonderfully so for our beautiful meatloaf that we have going on i'm going to move back over here so that i can show you this meat that we're using because again i forgot to say that when i gave you our a list of uh fixings i'll be right back okay guys you know what like i said i am so crazy i told you about everything except the meat that we're using let's get to it okay this guys in here is uh, ground beef and this is 85.15 and this is ground turkey and this is 93.7 meaning 93% lean 7% fat and guys I know there are going to be some naysayers out there that says yuck I don't like turkey I always hear that you know when I made the turkey bur burger I gave you my little disclaimer about that Guys, this mixes up into a wonderful meatloaf. It's just something about those two flavors together. Something about their textures together. It's really wonderful. Turkey has a more, when you use less fat for the turkey, it has a more grainy feel or texture. And the ground beef, you know how it is. It's kind of beefy and, you know, a little bit, I don't know how to describe it, but it's different. But when you put the two together, Wonderful combination. Okay, let's start adding our wonderful ingredients in here, shall we? Okay, and guys, again, I told you I used this little container here so you can see everything. So I think, guys, I'm going to just go in. This is going to be the hardest thing to mix in. This is our little uh, crackers and whipping cream. So I'm going to grab a spoon here. And we're just going to dump that in. And guys, it congeals. So it's almost like a paste when you get ready to put it in, but it makes for a wonderful moist meatloaf. So let's just get it in there. Look at that, it's almost like a paste when you put it in. It's not, it's not crackers, but it smells amazing. I love it. I love crackers plain, guys. Any kind of crackers I adore. Okay, and guys, let's throw in our, uh, our, our I'm sorry, our garlic and our onion powder and our pepper and our salt. Let's get it in. And that looks like a lot, guys, but this is a lot of meat in here. So, and guys, I did not take a measurement, but I think this was close to a bit over a pound, but almost close to two pounds of, um, of ground beef. And this is over two and a half pounds of ground turkey. So we're just going to get that in. And guys, let's dump that egg in there so we can get it all incorporated. We can't forget our garlic, uh, I'm sorry, our celery salt and our paprika. Sprinkle those guys in. Okay, and guys, last but not least, we are going to throw in that beautiful mustard. And guys, I'm going to play this one by ear. I'm just going to put a little bit in. This is probably 
oh my God, maybe a two teaspoons or a whopping tablespoon. So we're just going to dump him in there. And I may add some more of that in there. I'm not sure yet. We'll just have to see. And guys, this is the good part. You just get in there and mix it. And I just kind of go in and just mix it all together. And I meant to get a paper towel before I started this. So this is going to be a trial for us, but let's get it in. And guys, all you do is just mix it all in together. Get everything nice and incorporated together there. And this container makes it so much easier to do, especially when it comes down to showing you how this looks when it's being mixed. Look at that. Wonderful. And I'm just tossing meat out, guys. Again, there are some benefits to this type of pan, and there's also some downfalls. We're going to take the good with the bad. Oh, this smells so good. And there's, not, there's no seasoning in here yet except our powders but we have to put all those wonderful veggies in there and this smells absolutely incredible before we even put anything else in it oh my goodness okay guys this is not mixed yet let me grab a paper towel really quick and try to get some of this off my hands you just don't want to put food on your camera it's not appetizing at all okay so, we have all this in here. I am going to grab my veggies that we sauteed and we're going to dump those in. And our tomatoes, we're almost done putting this together. Give me just a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, guys. I have dumped those wonderful uh, wilted down veggies in here. Look at it. <laughs> that smells wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, veggies in. Let's throw in our beautiful tomatoes. And guys, I told you a long time ago, I love Rotel tomatoes. I put them in absolutely everything. I do not use tomato sauce or tomato paste a lot. So most of the time, if a recipe calls for anything tomato, it's typically going to be these. Because again, I'm not a tomato sauce person. I never use tomato sauce a lot. Every now and then, but very rarely. So anyway, guys, we are going to get this puppy all mixed up together. Look at this platter of wonderfulness we have here. It's going to be a pretty big meatloaf, huh? Okay. And guys, all we're going to do is just incorporate all these wonderful veggies into our wonderful ground beef and ground turkey. And we are going to get ready to make this into a beautiful loaf to serve for dinner tonight. Okay. All right, guys. I am going to get my hands back in there. I have a problem with uh, putting my hands and stuff. I have to wash them after I do it. I already washed them from the first time. But I'm going to get them dirty again because you have to do that when you're making meatloaf. So I'm going to mix this guy up and then I'm going to show you how I form it in my pan. I'll be right back. Okay, guys. Look at our beautiful mound of meat for our meatloaf. Wonderful. <laughs> look at that. How cute that... Guys, I cannot describe what this smells like. I can smell that Worcestershire sauce in there. All those wonderful peppers and onions. I can even smell the crackers and whipping cream in here. It, it, it's amazing. That's it. Okay, this is how I do mine, guys. I just go in and I just grab a scoop of it out and kind of just lay it in the pan. Scoop it and lay it until you get this nice little beautiful loaf. Look at that. And guys, this looks like a lot, but, well, it is kind of, but in actuality. And guys, even if this is too much, you can always freeze this, make little patties out of it if you want, or make another meatloaf if you have more left. Enough. So, we're just going to get this in. I think I'm going to try to get all of this in here, though, for our wonderful little meatloaf. This guy looks amazing. Look at that. Oh, my word. Look at that. We're going to go in and add a little bit to the top of it because we want a nice, beautiful, wonderful, juicy meatloaf. And guys, look at those tomatoes in there. If you could smell that, oh my goodness. And like I said, I know people put tomato paste or tomato sauce or what have you in their meatloaf. I just never have. I've always found an alternative. <laughs> to put in there because I said I'm not a fan of tomato paste or tomato sauce for that matter. And like I said, I make spaghetti and all of that stuff, but 
for the most part, if I can get away with not putting tomato sauce in it, I will. Okay, guys, we have all of this in our wonderful little meatloaf. Look at that. And as much as that was, we got it. We made it in. We did it. Get that last little scoop out of there. Put him right here. And kind of blend him in with the rest of our beautiful little loaf here. Look at that. Is that not amazing? Oh my goodness. And again, if nothing else, if it doesn't look amazing, it smells wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Okay, guys. All right. We have our little meatloaf nice and formed. And I did not mention it, but I had my oven preheating to 400 and I think 25. Let's see. Yes. 425 degrees. So when it's nice and warm, we're going to pop our beautiful meatloaf in the oven. And guys, I, again, with a lot of things, I don't know the precise cooking time. I'm going to put it in the oven, check it after about 30 to 45 minutes and see if it's done. And again, just like with everything else, I'm going to stick something in the center of it and kind of open it a little bit so I can look in there and make sure it's not pink on the inside or just make sure it's completely done. And my last little telltale sign, if it's done, if the juice runs clear when you actually poke something in it, that means it's cooked. Okay, all right, I will be right back. I'm gonna put this puppy in the oven. Okay, guys, I have a confession. When I started this, I was going to initially put the potatoes that I peeled on the side of my meatloaf, but that thing just got huge. It was just big, so nothing else was going to fit into that pan. So we are going to take a detour, if you will, do an alternative. So let me show you what we're going, what we're doing. Okay, these were the potatoes, and like I said, I sliced them long ways because I was going to sit them on the side of our meatloaf, but nothing is going in that pan but the meatloaf. So we're just going to grab another pan, and we're just going to layer these potatoes in here. That's it. We still want our potatoes with our meatloaf, but they're just not going to fit in the same pan. That's okay. So we're going to put them in a casserole dish by themselves. We're going to sprinkle them with a bit of this garlic, onion, and salt mixture that we made. Just a little bit. Get these puppies nice and seasoned up. Okay, you know we have to have our chives, come on. Don't sleep on the chives, they are wonderful. And guys, I would love to think what you, I, mean, I would love to hear what you think about the chives. I know I put chives in everything, but I promise you, if you do that, man, you'll always have a nice little wonderful oniony dish to whatever you put it in. It is wonderful and it looks amazing. I just love how it looks. Maybe that's what's going on with me. Okay, let's grab some of that pepper, guys. A little bit of that in there on our wonderful potatoes that got left out of our meatloaf pan because they wouldn't fit. Okay, and guys, that's it. All I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a little bit of water at the bottom of this pan, and I'm gonna put a bit of olive oil in there and cover it. That's it, so while the meatloaf is cooking, these will be cooking too. Almost done, and I'm gonna put another veggie on the side of this, because again, this was supposed to be the entire entree with the meatloaf and the potatoes, and I was gonna put something on the side. I still am, and I know I'm gonna hear something about this because a lot of people don't like this vegetable. I happen to love it. I like it in my salad. I like it as a side dish. It is wonderful. So I will tell you about that when I get back. Okay guys, our beautiful potatoes are out of the oven. Look at this meatloaf. How wonderful is that? A beautiful mountain meatloaf. Look at that thing. Ah, absolutely perfect. Okay, guys, I have some ketchup here. I'm going to put it on half because I told you, again, tomato sauce, tomato paste, ketchup, all of it. I only like it sometimes. I'm going to try it with the ketchup, but I'm only going to put it on half of my meatloaf or as far as this little ketchup here has to go. So let's just get it on there. Guys, if you could smell this kitchen. Oh my goodness, if you could just, uh, I can't even, you know what, I'm just, I'm just ready to eat this. <laughs> I am hungry and I am ready to eat. I'm going to put it on a little bit more than half, guys, because I have a little bit extra going on there. Look at this beautiful meatloaf. Oh my word. Look at this. 
And guys, just a little tidbit, I'm doing half ketchup on my meatloaf. And sometimes I actually put cream of mushroom soup on the other half because sometimes I want the meatloaf with that little bit of gravy-like uh, sauce on it as opposed to the ketchup. I think I'm just going to leave it plain this time because just in case I want to put ketchup on it later, I can. But just in case I want to eat it plain, I can do that too. So, five minutes in the oven, guys. We'll be back and it is time to eat. My other little veggie here on the side, I have it ready as well. It is time to make our plate and eat. I'll be right back. Okay, guys. Look at this beautiful meal that we have created. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Is that not just the best thing? Oh my goodness. Let's make us a plate. Yes. Okay, I told you I'm gonna try the ketchup side, even though that would have been my side, but I'm gonna try the ketchup side. Look at that. Guys, that is so tender and wonderful. And guys, I'm not gonna slice it. I'm just gonna get out a hunk. <laughs> that sounds pretty greedy, doesn't it? Look at that. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Perfect texture. Wonderful. Okay, let's get some of these beautiful potatoes. And guys, they did just fine whether they were in the same pan as the meatloaf or not. Look at that. Nice, tender, moist potatoes. With our beautiful chives on there. Look at that. How cute. And I told you for our little surprise veggie, nothing would make this dinner more perfect than beets. You heard me, beets. I love beets, you guys. I eat them plain, I eat them in my salad. It just doesn't matter. It's a wonderful little side dish to any meal. Let's grab some of these beautiful chives. Look at that. Wonderful, wonderful dinner. Okay, guys. I am going to move over there so that we can try this. I can't wait. I am starving. Okay, time to eat. I'll be right back. Okay, guys. I cannot wait. It is so time to eat this beautiful, beautiful meal we have prepared. Father, we come before you, Lord, today just saying thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you so much, Father, for your precious son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins. Father, thank you so much. I know we have a bunch of shortcomings, Lord, but you love us anyway, Father. Again, that's why we just have to come before you, Father, just say thank you. And like I said, Lord, if we could say that a thousand times, it would not be enough. Father, we just want to thank you for this food that, you've allowed, that you have allowed us today for the nourishment of our body. In your precious son's name, we pray, Lord. Amen. Okay, guys, look at this. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Look at that meatloaf. How wonderful and perfect is that? Look at those potatoes. Even though they weren't cooked in the same pan as the meatloaf, yummy nonetheless. And guys, don't sleep on these beets. All I put in here was salt, pepper, sugar, chives, and olive oil. That's it. And you have a wonderful little side that is a great accompaniment to any meal that you make. Okay. Enough talking. Let me let you see this beautiful. Look at that. Oh, my. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that beautiful tomato in there. Onions. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Okay. Enough. Enough. It is time for the moment of truth. Let's get in. This is hot. I just took it out of the oven, but let's see. Look at that. Oh, it looks, it smells so wonderful. Can't even describe that. Oh, moist, wonderful. Oh, all those flavors that we put in there, guys. Oh my goodness, I can taste that little hint of mustard in there, that Worcestershire sauce. 
all those beautiful peppers and onions and celery. This is absolutely perfect. See, had I had meatloaf like, like this years ago, I probably would make it more and I'd probably love it more. This is amazing. Amazing. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, 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 mm. So tangy and so wonderful. Oh. Mm. And I told you that whipping cream and uh, cracker mixture that we put in there, it made this so moist. It is so wonderful. And guys, if I hadn't told you that this was turkey and ground beef from the you would have never known. That gives those two meat combinations gives this wonderful, beautiful texture. And that meatloaf, it is absolutely that is a pretty big piece, and I'm going to eat it anyway. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Another bit of foolishness. That make a bit of sense. Oh, mm, mm, mm. I could probably just eat that, guys. I didn't need any sides. I think I can just eat that and be done. But let's not sleep on our beautiful potatoes. Simple yet wonderful. Mm. What can I say? Potatoes are yummy. They're just, I don't care how you cook them. I told you, that was my challenge with the low carb thing. I love potatoes and I love potatoes and beets together. When I'm serving beets, potatoes is always the uh, second or the first side item with that. Wonderful. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> and these are a bit sweet. So, mm, our whole plate includes everything. Wonderful and uh, soft, tender potatoes seasoned perfectly. That wonderful tangy meatloaf and those wonderful little mild sweet beets. Ah, just the best. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop because, uh, mm, I need to go ahead and finish this. I'm sorry, I'm hungry and I'm not going to let you watch it, okay? Mm. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. That is oh mm, mm, mm. okay mm. okay let me stop I'm just gonna keep eating this let me stop okay mm. Mm. man that is good okay mm. cheers thank you mm. As always, wonderful. Okay, guys, mm, I'm not rushing, but I need to eat that. I That is so wonderful. Everything on there is wonderful. The meatloaf is absolutely perfect. I mean, again, when I was younger, I did not appreciate a meatloaf. But when I learned how to make it myself, and I could put what I wanted in it, what I thought would make it wonderful, Man, best meal, best meal on the planet. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I certainly appreciate it. And guys, don't forget, comment. Very important. I want to know what you think about these things. I want you to tell me all your thoughts. Tell me what you think about it. And also, and I don't know if I said that earlier, but if there's something you want to see, tell me and I'll make it for you. Okay, and again, I don't know if I can make it the way you know it or the way you're used to it, but I certainly give it a shot if you tell me you want to see it. Thank you so much, guys. I love you all. Thank you so much. Oh, don't forget to subscribe. Always forget to say that. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, and share. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you the next time. Bye.